This is the third part of the FRS training series. In this part, I will continue talking about PTP, the precision time protocol defined in IEEE 1588. I will also tell about the testing of FRS. First, we will go through PTP accuracy issues and explain PTP profiles. Then I will present the protocol stack followed by how HSR and PTP can be used together. After that, we will move on to testing of HSR devices. PTP standard targets to sub-microsecond accuracy, but nanosecond accuracy is also possible. The best results Flexibilis has achieved have been 1 nanosecond accuracy peak-to-peak -peak with gigabit fiber optic Ethernet. However, that requires special hardware components, for example high-stability oscillators. Typically, the accuracy that can be achieved, for example with general FPGA evaluation boards, is some 100 nanoseconds. The synchronization accuracy is affected by several error sources. One is the accuracy of the timestamping at hardware, which is typically in the range of 10 to 100 nanosecond with copper Ethernet. With copper Ethernet, the inaccuracy is dominated by physical layer chip first in first out operation, whose length is undefined. Also, the stability of the onboard oscillator and the adjustment algorithm affects the accuracy. One significant source of inaccuracy in the network are the possible non IEEE 1588 capable switches. The switches in the PTP network that do not support PTP cause a lot of delay variation that cannot be compensated. This affects the accuracy a lot. The delay caused by non-compliant switches is typically asymmetric because it is a function of network traffic that is typically asymmetric too. PTP is unable to measure or correct this kind of unknown asymmetric network delay. Also, the number of hops affects the synchronization accuracy. Every node causes some inaccuracy, so the more there are nodes, the more there are sources for inaccuracy. The idea of the PTP standard is to offer a common way to distribute time information, information and synchronize devices over packet-based networks. The PTP standard defines mechanisms, configuration parameters and settings that can be used to adjust the functionality of the protocol to suit for different operating environments. The standard has also a possibility to extend the protocol using TLVs. TLV, or type length, length value, is a way to add features without breaking compatibility with other versions. PTP profiles are used to define how to use PTP in different environments. There are several different of these profiles. A profile specifies the protocol configuration and possible additional TLVs used in some specific type of network. Profiles make it easier for device manufacturers to implement devices that are compatible with other manufacturers' devices. Here are examples of different profiles. Note that there are more profiles, profiles than just the ones presented here. The default profile is currently the most commonly used one. It uses UDP multicast. The telecom profile, telecom profile is used in telecom networks 
and it uses UDP Unicast. Power Profile is meant for power system applications, and AVB Profile is for audio video broadcast networks. FRS is able to support any profile currently defined. Next, we will look more closely at the power profile, since it is the profile most commonly used with FRS. As said before, the power profile is meant to be used in power system applications. Power profile transfers PTP message messages directly over layer 2 Ethernet, and it uses peer-to-peer -peer transparent clock. The power profile requires that one microsecond accuracy is achieved. Timing accuracy degrades when the amount of network hops increases. The power profile defines the maximum number of hops from the grandmaster to be 16. Here you can see an example picture with 11 hops between the master clock and an IED, intelligent electronic device used in substation automation. A PTP protocol stack is needed to implement PTP ordinary and boundary clock functionalities. It is also needed for supporting peer-to-peer -peer transparent clocks. The only PTP clock type that does not need to implement a PTP protocol stack is end-to-end -end transparent clock. The flexibilis implementation of PTP protocol stack is divided into four modules. PTP module, clock module, operation system specific module, and packet module. The PTP module contains the PTP protocol functionality and it is hardware and operation system independent, so it can be used with many different kinds of hardware and operating systems. The clock, OS and packet modules are implemented as libraries. One or more of them needs to be ported or rewritten if the hardware or the operation system is changed. The reference design provided is compatible with NIOS and Microsy OS 2. With typical HSR networks, peer-to-peer -peer transparent clocks have to be used instead of end-to-end -end transparent clocks. This is because there are more than one different routes the messages can travel, and in end-to-end -end mode, the delay can be calculated separately for all the different routes. So if P2P, so if PTP is to be used in an HSR network, all the nodes must have peer-to-peer -peer transparent clocks. Two-step clock, which uses separate follow-up message after sync message, doesn't work if there is more than one ring in the network. The reason follow-up messages cannot be used is because there are several different routes for the messages to take. The receiver has no way to know which ones of the follow-up messages correspond to which event messages. This means that one-step clock must be used with HSR. FRS supports one-step transparent clock, which means that it makes its correction to the event message, not the follow-up message. Because one-step transparent clocks are compatible with two-step operation, FRS can be used as a transparent clock also in networks that use two-step clock. Note, however, that even though some compatibility exists between one-step and two-step, a boundary clock has to be used between one-step and two-step network segments. Next, we will move on to testing HSR and PTP solutions. We'll go through the things different parties should test. 
Implementing HSR or PTP Power Profile is not possible with pure software. This means that there is always an FPGA IP, or perhaps in the future an ASIC, doing the forwarding of the 800 frames, timestamping, and so on. FPGA IP blocks are always tested by simulation. However, Ethernet switch is quite a complex component and the simulation times of Ethernet frames going through a switch are long. The IP component has to be tested also at real hardware with real Ethernet traffic. Comprehensive testing of all the necessary HSR, PRP and PTP functionalities requires also having software that employs the IP functionality. This is the case especially with the time synchronization functionality. For testing with real Ethernet traffic and real devices, Flexibilis has created a reference design for FPGA development boards. A test network has been built of these boards that is used for testing the hardware and software design of Flexibilis. The reference design can be downloaded from the Flexibilis website, so anyone can build a test network of their own. There is also a document describing the test network. Here is a simple example of the test network. The Paragon emulates the different ring sizes to test delay and jitter, congestion and error situations. Please see the test plan document for more information and more complex test networks. The link is in the video description. From the point of view of an application software provided, provider, an HSR network is quite similar to traditional Ethernet networks. The most noticeable difference is that in an HSR network, in case of a network error, frames can go into wrong order. This is not allowed in normal Ethernet. Applications that use Internet protocol have to tolerate frames arriving in the wrong order, but for applications that use raw Ethernet, this is a new requirement. Also due to the big number of hops in a typical HSR network, the maximum latencies can be higher than in traditional Ethernet. When testing the application software, the characteristics of HSR can be either emulated with software or an HSR network can can be built for testing purposes. The device manufacturer naturally has to test all the functionalities in his device. This is despite the fact that many of the functionalities are most probably provided by components from other parties who have already tested them. Practically, the manufacturer has no other choice than to build a test network with his devices. For compatibility tests, the network should have other manufacturers' devices as well. For testing the data transfer capability, we suggest using standard test defined in RFC 2544. As the data throughput performance of an HSR ring is the same as the throughput of the weakest performing device, the performance should be the same as theoretical maximum at least between the ring ports. Time synchronization is most easily tested with an oscilloscope or a time interval counter if there are pulse per second outputs in the devices. Therefore, we would suggest implementing a PPS output interface in every device that implements an ordinary clock, at least in the device internal debug interface. 
the power profile requires the synchronization accuracy to be 1 microsecond over 16 hops. This is the end of the third part. Please continue to the fourth one, in which I will tell more about the different node types in HSR and PRP networks. Thank you for watching.